It's happening, you guys. I am building what is arguably the best 3D printer in 2022. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you all about it, how it came to be, the decisions I've made along the way, and also why you should stay tuned for the entire build process. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about the very, very exciting 3D printer build that I have just begun undertaking. And yes, I am building the coveted Voron 2.4 350 millimeter. Now, before we dive into that, for the uninitiated, I wanna give you a little bit of backstory about what exactly a Voron is. And of course, if you already know and you're already in the know, hit the chapters below and skip this bit. For those of you who aren't aware of Voron or are aware, but maybe don't know the backstory, Voron originally started years and years ago as a 3D printer startup company out of Silicon Valley. They went about designing the no holds barred, absolute best 3D printer where money was no object and they could build the most over-engineered insane machine possible. That means crazy speeds, bigger sizes, less maintenance, more reliability, and just generally an insane 3D printer. Now, what most people don't realize is it actually started as a four project startup and unfortunately it failed. And so the creators of Voron decided that instead of scrapping all their hard work, they would publish the designs online for free open source and well, the rest is history. People joined the cause, took up the arms, if you will, and started contributing to the project, leading to more printers, more upgrades, more insane performance, and here we are today. Voron is not a printer that you can buy. It is something you need to build. And while they have many different designs from the Tiny 0.1 to the Trident or the Voron 2.4 that I'm building, they do not sell the parts. Now, recently, what has happened is that various different manufacturers, including LDO and FizTech and some others, have put together kits. Because in the past, if you wanted a Voron, you needed to source each individual nut and bolt, in addition to printing all the parts, and then putting it together, which is over a 30 hour build for some of their printers. So that's what a Voron is today. Now let's talk about why I'm building this and why in today's day and age, in 2022, I think that this is still the absolute best 3D printer. Because look, I get it. The Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon is out and it does crazy fast speeds for about the price of a Voron 2.4. And it also is a ready-made product that you have to do no assembly. We have the Prusa XL coming out soon, which we don't know the speed, but we know it's gonna be big. We know it's gonna be reliable. And we know Prusa is obviously going to offer it as a kit and as a fully assembled printer. So why a Voron? Well, a couple different reasons. Number one, Bamboo Lab didn't offer me a printer, and if they did, I may or may not have built a Voron. Number two, I've been watching the reviews very, very closely, and the biggest complaint about the Bamboo Lab is just the closed ecosystem. You can't really modify it. Parts are available now, but who knows in the next five years if there are going to be parts, and those parts are proprietary and not open source. So if you wanna have longevity, you wanna be able to modify your printers as I always do, well, the Bamboo Lab is kind of not an option. And number three, I really wanted to explore the world of Voron. I wanted to see what a 3D printer would look like if cutting cost was not a factor in the development and design. I wanted to see my own skills. I wanted to customize the printer for my own needs. And that's really something you can only do with a Voron. Now let's talk about how it all happened because I said as a joke, but also seriously, that the main reason why I'm building the Voron and not a Bamboo Lab is because Bamboo Lab never offered me a 3D printer which is fine. I didn't have a YouTube channel when they were doing their big promotion and Blitzkrieg all over YouTube, giving a printer to pretty much every YouTuber. I get it, no hard feelings, Bamboo Lab. But the story of how my Voron came to be is actually a pretty crazy one. You see, I started this channel really only a few months ago and I started emailing some of the companies that I love and admire and just wanted to put myself on their radar. I didn't expect anything. I just really wanted them to subscribe to my channel, let me know what they think, give me feedback, and keep me in mind when the channel grows so that maybe we can work together and maybe I could try out some of their products. 
I certainly did not expect to get an email back from the co-founder and co-owner of LDO Motors, Jason, saying, hey, we actually have already seen your videos and we love them and we'd love to send you a Voron kit. My mind was blown. I was excited as a giddy schoolgirl on the first day of school, and I obviously humbly accepted their very, very generous offer. Now, you'll notice in the email screenshot that I shared, they actually offered me a Voron Trident, which is a very, very similar printer to the one that I'm actually building, except it uses Core XY kinematics and the bed moves up and down, as opposed to the gantry moving up and down. Now, why did I choose to look a gift horse in the mouth and say, actually, you know what? I think I'd really like to have the Voron 2.4. I mean, after all, the Trident is, and most people don't realize this, a newer design and significantly easier to build. Well, this comes down to a couple really simple practical reasons. As you can see in my printer cabinet to my right, my printer, or at least my large format printer, is up high. Meaning that if I had a printer where the print bed was in motion, I would have to climb up on this bench over here every single time I want to unload and load filament because the print head would be all the way up at the top. Now, the Voron 2.4 is a little bit different. The print head starts at the bottom and I'll be able to load and unload filament from standing on the ground right over there. So it's a kind of silly reason, but a practical one and one that I think makes a lot of sense for me personally. And if there's anything I've learned about Vorons from watching all the different content out there, it's that you don't build the Voron, you build your Voron, customized to your wants and your needs and your specifications. Now, I don't know if I mentioned this part yet, but I'm not building just any Voron 2.4. I'm building the largest one that you can build, 350 by 350 by 350. That's a huge printer, and it means that it's going to be even more work to lug around, wire, and just generally deal with. So why would I build such a big printer? Well, the reason is very simple. I only have room for two printers at a time. Right now, that means my Prusa MK3S+, Plus, my beloved, beloved Prusa, and it also means my somewhat beloved Creality CR10, a large format 30 by 30 by 40 printer. In order to house this Voron, I'm gonna need to move one of those printers to a friend's house or something. And so I wanted to ensure that I don't lose the ability to do large prints. After all, in the past, including in my 50 plus useful things you didn't know you could print video, I showed you how I'd use that larger bed to print all kinds of really, really cool and very practical stuff around the house. And I don't wanna forfeit that. So yeah, I could have built a 300 by 300 by 300, but I figured I've got the space in my printer cabinet, why not go big and print even bigger things? Who knows, maybe I can even print furniture for my toddler or all kinds of crazy stuff that I couldn't have even imagined when I only had a lowly 30 by 30 by 40. So that's why I feel that the 2.4 350 millimeter is the absolute best printer for me. Once we decided that, Jason was so gracious and offered to upgrade me to that printer free of charge, including paying for the customs, although I did pay for shipping. Nonetheless, super, super grateful and really, really excited for LDO to provide what I've heard is the absolute best Voron 2.4 kit. But I still had a lot of decisions to make. You see, when you build a Voron, you need to decide all kinds of different things. How are you going to power it? Is it going to be with an octopus board or another kind of board? How are you gonna run Clipper? Are you gonna run it on a Raspberry Pi or a Banana Pi or an Octopi or whatever? And of course, what hot end are you going to use? And that seems to be really the biggest decision that people have to make. Now, LDO was gracious enough to offer me that amazing E3D Revo Voron that I have been eyeing for so long, but I also want to go about and do faster prints and really push the limit of this 2.4 to see if it competes with something crazy fast like that Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon. So I'm also in talks with another sponsor to provide a mysterious high flow hot end that hopefully if it works out, I will reveal to you all as the build progresses. But I still had some decisions to make because you can choose different colors, different materials, such as ABS or ASA, and of course, different providers. Now, I wanted to stick with the original rep wrap ideology and actually print my own parts for my printer. 
For those of you who don't know, RepRap is a movement which in its core is about creating printers that can create printers, self-duplicating printers. The most famous of which is the Prusa i3, which literally is used in Prusa's printer farm to print other Prusas, including my own. Now, I probably could have found a sponsor to send me the printed parts, and people actually even reached out when I posted about this project on the community tab of my channel. Make sure you're subscribed to get updates there and offered me the printed parts, which would have saved me about 200 plus hours of tinkering, printing, sorting files, and so on. But I really wanted to print my own parts because I think it's just so cool to be able to say that I built my printer from a pile of hardware and some rolls of filament. So I reached out to a couple different manufacturers that I love, and I was overjoyed when Polymaker responded to my tweet saying that they love to sponsor exciting projects. Now, given the fact that so many other people have built Vorons. I don't know how exciting this project is in general, but I'm glad that they were excited as I am. And they offered to send me kilos and kilos of their Polymaker ASA filament. Now, why ASA? After all, anyone who's looked into a Voron knows that Voron calls for ABS parts exclusively. Well, ASA is a great alternative to ABS because it has all of the mechanical properties and heat resistant properties, but it's also really great with UV resistance and most importantly for me, because again, as we said, I'm building my Voron, it has fewer fumes and is less difficult to print. Now I have a print enclosure, so I don't have to worry about warping and drafts and things like that, but I also have a young child at home and a pregnant wife who sits approximately half a meter from my 3D printers. So it was really important to me, despite all the filtration and air filters that I have in the printer cabinet, that there not be as many noxious fumes for my wife and I to inhale in this small office. So those are the choices that I've made and hopefully I'll have a little bit more of an update on the hot end that I'll be choosing and maybe even comparing against the E3D Revo. Now a quick update on where the project stands and there are gonna be a lot of these updates both on the community tab of my channel and also various additional videos where I'll be sharing my progress and the build. Right now I'm about 10 to 20% through printing the parts and I've been having a great time with the Polymaker ASA. Again, they didn't pay me to say this and they gave me some free filament, but I have to say this is the first time that I've been able to print ASA without it sliding off the bed and causing all kinds of warping and issues. So I'm super glad that Polymaker chose to work with me and that I reached out to them in my small list of filament sponsors. I've printed a bunch of the different parts, most of them on my Prusa MK3S Plus, and I'm dabbling around with printing some of them on my Creality CR10 V3 using a 0.6 millimeter nozzle and a Rackney perimeter generator, which is technically not what they recommend in the Voron guide. I found this amazing and super useful spreadsheet tool which automatically generates a list of the parts you need based on the decisions you've made along the way, such as size, hot end, and which board, and that's really helping guide me in which parts to print and what colors to print them in. Though, to be honest, I did make a huge mistake and print the wrong file, meaning that I printed about 150 grams of the same part twice, and I have duplicates of all those parts. Who knows, maybe I will join the Print It Forward program and send those parts out to someone else who is printing their own Voron. So this video is running a little longer than I wanted to, but before I let you go, I would love to hear in the comments below what kinds of things that you would like to see out of this build. One thing that really frustrated me and really led me to decide that I need to build my own Voron is that the other content creators that I look up to and admire kind of just post their finished video. I mean, they often do a live stream, but I haven't seen any finished videos with their conclusions, thoughts, and it's left a lot of questions for me. I mean, some questions that I have, how hard is it actually to build a Voron if you're not an engineer, which a lot of the YouTubers who are building these are engineers. I also wanna know how hard is it to learn and understand and use Clipper for someone who's used Marlin for so long? I wanna understand as well, is it actually worth all the effort to build, source, print, and actually do this if you're not a YouTuber like me, like Stefan, like Thomas Sandlatterer, using this for content which grows our businesses? So those are a few of the questions that I wanna know and hope to answer in videos, but I'd love to know below what you wanna know. 
What kinds of comparison videos, questions? Do you guys wanna see me live stream the build or would you rather just see a time lapse summarizing it? I need to know all of this before the LDO kit actually arrives, so hit the comments below and let me know. Actually, the box just showed up, but I'm flying to Form Next tomorrow, so unfortunately, I don't even have time to open up the box, and I'm pretty sure that's a form of torture. If you've made it this far, I super appreciate it. I'm really excited to share this build with all of you, and I look forward to reading your comments. Please do make sure that you're subscribed with the bell notification icon clicked so you get updates not only of the new videos that I put out, but also all the videos and pictures that I'm gonna be sharing right on the community tab of this channel. Thanks for watching and happy 3D printing.